What's going on, my royal priesthood? It's your girl, the priestess. Here's another episode of Conversations with the Priestess. Now, many of you all have followed my journey in dating and know that I am a salacious person and I'm down with the get down. However, I am a part of that community that is what they call T for T, which means trans for trans. Subscribe, like, and follow, share this. I'm going to go ahead and hit that intro and then I'm going to talk about what T for T is and is not. All right, let's jump into it. Trans for trans. Woo. If you are on the apps or if you are on social media and you come across some of the dating groups on social media, you will see in a lot of trans people's bios, T for T, which means trans for trans. Trans for trans signifies that I am a trans person and I'm interested in hooking up, dating, interacting with other trans people. Nothing against censored people, but as a trans person, I can relate to other trans and non-binary people better than I can cis people because it's a totally different experience. I am T for T. Although I still have relations with cisgender people. I'm pansexual, but as far as relationship wise and committed relationships and my polycule, I, at this moment in time, I don't see myself adding a cisgender person to that at this moment. If I was to add a cisgender person, I would add a cis woman, but I would not add a cis man simply because in my experience with cis men, my pleasure is often ignored and it's so many games that men play. I'm not downing anybody. I'm stating my experience. Don't y'all come for me in the comments. Don't y'all get mad at me. I'm stating my experience and I may not be, you may not be my target audience, but in my experience with men, with cis men, my pleasure has been ignored and it's been frustrating to communicate with and figure things out. Like for real, <clears throat> case in point, I've hooked up with individuals and in the hooking up process, we're talking, you know, having a great conversation. And when it comes down to what are you into, you mainly get top, bottom, I give a little sloppy toppy, you know, I may get a little sloppy toppy or, you know, it's just the basics, very vanilla. Whereas in my profile, I state specifically the things that I'm into. And also I may have like, um, edging. If you know what edging is, I talk about that in a previous episode, um, <clears throat> about that. So yeah. And when I ask, when I tell them what I'm into, or if they see something like edging or something that they're not familiar with, like impact play, instead of researching, they'll come and ask me what it is, or either they're into, they'll say they're into impact play. And when I start explaining to them what it is and what I like to do, they're like, oh, oh, I thought that was something else. It's like, mm. and I chalk it up to this fantasy that. Trans women are this dominant creature. And I recognize that a lot of men love to be dominated by women. And that's because men are seen as these leaders, as this big alpha male dominant thing, dominant being. And because they're put on this pedestal of being leaders, sometimes they want to be submissive. And it's not just re relegated to men. Myself as a woman... Because I'm in a position of leadership and authority in, in what I do in my vocation and what I do outside of content creation. And also I'm running a whole ship here. I have to be, you know, aggressive a lot of times, but also in dealing with life, I have to be aggressive because I'm a trans woman and I'm black. And so with all of these things is like, sometimes I want to be submissive, but back to the point anyway. And it's also the fantasy, as I was saying, the fantasy also about being with a trans woman. They're so caught into fantasy that they don't look at dealing with a trans woman 
as real life and not the flick like they watch on P-Hub. And not only that, but in, in dealing with cis men, and I'm talking to a sector of those who like to um, dress up as women, not trans people, but I'm talking about cross-dressers. I'm not going to use another term that they use, which is actually a slur. I'm not into those types. And a lot of cis men hit me up, you know, number one, fetishizing me. Then you get those that will immediately say, hey, mommy, how are you? Not M-A-M-I, but M-O-M-M-Y. And that annoys me, especially as a black woman, because I feel like you're playing into that mammy trope. That racist mammy trope. And I can't stand that. I cannot stand that at all. And with all of this happening, it makes me not want to deal with cis men. But also when we're in the act of relations and going to pound town, I have, to, I, they don't communicate what they want. That's the point that I wanted to go to. Like I'm a very kinky woman. If you follow my Merlin Mystique pages, if you follow um, my Yannick T nude pages or any of my salacious content, you know I'm a kinky woman, okay? You know I do the tantric self-love, um, all of that jazz, toy play, impact play, um, wanting to get into a little bit of shibari and, you know, a little bit of bondage. However, <clears throat> I'm okay with just doing some low-key vanilla stuff and a lot of foreplay making it interesting if you're not into that, okay? I'm very pliable. However, communicate to me what you really want. I hate when I'm hooking up with a man and we've already talked about what we're going to do. But when we get here, I'm in positions that I'm not comfortable in and I'm having to tell him that and telling him, hey, this can be comfortable you as well. There's no communication or either they really want to bottom and they're not prepared. So they tell you, oh, I, I want I want to get eaten or, you know, I want to I want to take the I want to take the D. But then you're not prepared to take the D. And it's like. If you knew you wanted to do that, why didn't you prepare? And also we have Google. We have resources that tells you how to bottom, how to prepare for whatever act that you're doing. And a lot of things are common sense when you're getting ready to hook up with someone. And just the struggle of meeting up with cis men is frustrating. Now, I've had I've had struggles hooking up with some trans people as well. I'm not going to leave y'all out because I'm going to come right up to the alley with me being trans or trans in a minute and my woes with that. But in dealing with cis men, it's just like, uh-uh. Mm -mm. But then also, the last cis man that I dealt with, I'll call him the wayward wagon. Fine, man. Loves anime just like I do. But come to find out, I was really the the backup and the side piece. And he told me that he was non-monogamous. And I was under the assumption that his partner knew. He did not tell me that he was building a life with this person. And then tells me about how they're building this family and everything. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and back up. I'm good. I already got my eyes set on someone. I was already letting you go, but I was trying to milk it for what it was. But you know what? Loose it and let it go. I'm not 20 anymore. I'm a whole 38 years old. I'm too grown for the games. And with that experience and also the other abusive men, cis men, of course, that I've had to deal with, I just, you know, I just can't deal with it. You know, I, I just can't deal with it. And also, if anybody in any part of the community um, trans as well do any of these things. I'm nipping that in the bud as well. Now, while I am trans for trans, that doesn't mean I'm just, just attracted to every trans person. No, I have my types. You know, I know what I'm looking for. But also in being trans for trans, being black, I get fetishized a lot. I get the, hey, beautiful, how are you? You know, you're so gorgeous. I love your brown skin. And immediately that turns me off. And also, if I see the acronyms for the British Broadcasting Channel, British Broadcasting, um, yeah, that that acronym, you're getting blocked 
because baby, you know, that's a slur. I can't stand when I see black men do that. I used to do that back in the day, not understanding the history of it. But when I learned the history of it, baby, you can't pay me to do that. No, ma'am. And also it's also the whole feminization thing as well. Like for real, you know, I'm down for that. And I have done some interracial things. Yes. Had some great experiences. But now that I'm, I'm more settled into my sexuality and into my whole sexual being, I know what I'm not going to put up with. And fetishization is one of those things and the whole idea of race. Now, also in dealing with trans for trans, regardless of race, I don't like when people make it weird or awkward, you know, and a lot of times um, since I'm in an ethically non-monogamous relationship with my partner, when we're working with couples and things, you know, even with trans community, with the trans community, of course you have things with colorism and also it's, it's, it can be a whole lot of back and forth, but and it's like too much emphasis on the wrong stuff when you're trying to hook up. And, you know, I just don't, mm -mm, I just don't like that. Now, I'm not bashing my own community. I'm just saying this is the frustration with any community. But <clears throat> with being trans for trans, I want people to understand that, you know, just because a trans woman is out there scouting, doesn't mean that she's automatically going to hook up with a trans masculine individual. I love my trans masculine individuals and I, I love all individuals. I have fun. They have fun with me. We coagulate in a symphony of music, just like I do with my trans sisters and my cis sisters and some occasionally my cis men. But I want people to stop getting in this notion that Trans people of opposite genders are going to automatically be attracted to each other. Yes, there are some trans um, hetero relationships. There are some trans relationships that are queer relationships. There are relationships out of there that, you know, you can't really put a label on because it's queer or different. And from the I can I know people from the straight side or the cishet side. We'll think, well, y'all should just be all happy with one another. No, but y'all are always in our DMs wanting to have with us as well. So, yeah. But also, also with being T for T and sometimes us meeting up with cis individuals, a lot of times it's the excitement of the third party that we're entering in, but sometimes it can go left. My partner, I my partner and I have had hookups to where the individual was speaking so much game, talking so much on the eggplant. And when he gets there, he could not perform. And he was all set to take us to pound town, but he ends up saying, Oh, I just really wanted to get some sloppy toppy. Why didn't you just say that? And I know I brought that point up earlier. And I, I and again, I hate miscommunications. But now that I'm T for now that I'm in a space of T for T, I'm I'm happy. And I, and there's no shortage at all of trans individuals. But I do believe the uh, another issue with trans for trans dating, there are not enough trans centered apps. There are not enough trans-centered things for us. We are creating our own things, and I love it. However, we don't have the same resources as everybody else sometimes, but we're getting the damn thing done. Or either those apps are not as popular um, because a lot, of, a lot of cis people will invade trans spaces and masquerade as trans. I've seen it on the apps. And it frustrates me because... I was on Taimi and there was this man, fine man. And I noticed in his bio, it had him listed as a trans masculine individual. When I've seen him before, I'm like, I know you're not trans because you've shown me what you got. And I'm not basing it on a genit basing it on genitalia, but I'm just saying, you know, sir, I'm not dumb. So I asked him, I said, sir, why do you have 
that you're trans in your profile. You're not trans. He said, hold up. Let me call you and explain. I said, no, what you're doing is dangerous. And you're putting trans masculine individuals in harm's way. But it also is going to blow back on trans women that were tricking individuals, particularly black trans women. And these people know what the fuck they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. And it, it, it boils my blood all the time. Like it boils my blood. And in trying to find the transfer trans spaces, a lot of times those transfer trans spaces are very much for the cis gays. And I hate that. Like there's nothing more dumb than having a trans event, but you've done nothing to make it trans centered. You know, I'm gonna leave that alone. And yes, Yes, on app. Now, an app I would recommend if you're looking for some trans for trans action, action is Lex. Lex is a good app. It's L-E-X. You can find it on the app store. Um, they have like, I believe, a $4.99, $5.99 membership thing now. When I was on it, it was free. And I absolutely love it. And I I, I would tell you to go to OkCupid as well. Now, I, I would recommend FetLife as well. If you're more so into the kink side, it's really up to you and how you manage the website. Everybody's experience is going to be different. And this is why I use the platform that I have and the social medias that I have to let people know that I am T for T. I have no shame about it. I, I absolutely love being T for T. And it excites me. And even, um, even in my collection of magic material, you know, my, my, um, self time material, my playtime material. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find the right thing to say. Y'all bear with me. But when I have my collection of self playtime material, I have been really on T for T and trans essential part, like trans essential content. I'm actually, I'm absolutely all for it. And I'm loving, I love the form of a trans woman. I love the form of my trans masculine people. I love it. I love the human body period. But for me being a trans woman, I'm loving, I love to see individuals like me get in touch with themselves in that way. I love, I love seeing people. I'm such a for you. I love seeing people pleasure themselves. Absolutely love it. But it's something when I see other trans people doing it, it just, it settles me. It's like I can connect better. Um, I, I, I'm having difficulty putting it into the words, but it excites me. It arouses me better because I'm like, I can relate to the action going on here now. Like, oh, uh, and it's good. I was watching a couple. Oh, uh, and who, baby, it got me right together. And uh, before I go any further, I'm going to drop a few names. <clears throat> and these creators, I absolutely love their content. Um, now, I have done a collab with one of these individuals, the Tomboy Goddess herself, my friend Didi. Um, You can follow me on my Merlin Mystique page for that for that collab. But also, I love Sir Trans Lloyd and Reckless Rails or Young and Reckless. Oh, my gosh. Tay for Tay, Okay. Now, if you are a trans content creator, I don't care what type of content you do. If you're listening to this podcast, child, follow me and I will follow you back and let's connect. Let's help share and like each other's stuff and let's connect as well. Right. Let's do business together because what I'm I'm for the trans community. Why not be? It's my community. If we don't be for ourselves, who's going to be for us? OK. Can I get an amen? And again, these content creators get me to where I need to go. Now, I have other content creators. Now, although sexual wise, I don't really do a whole lot with cis men like that. I still watch my cis male, cis women creators. You know, my cis men, my cis women content creators. I still love them. They make me do. They make me do some things, you know, let me do some things. And. I'm I'm loving the place that I'm in right now, and I'm happy. Now, if you're trans for trans, I want you to comment or leave a review or repost or repost a link your the link to this and let me know that you listen to this podcast with a mermaid emoji and let me know that you're trans for trans. I've said all that I needed to say for this podcast. Be on the lookout 
for Priests Out the Dark exclusively on Patreon this Wednesday at dropping at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The audio will not be available um, because of the subject matter that I'm talking about. Um, but however, y'all can get everything on the Patreon and on my Yannick Taylor OF page as well. I'm going to also have a couple of salacious things on there. So yeah, now the Patreon that is $8.99 for the regular content, but for the all-inclusive package of all the salacious and the freaky deaky content and the nudist content, that's the $10.99 package. And my OF pages are $8.99, you know, so y'all go ahead and subscribe to those. Um, I try to balance it out so you can get what you want on each platform, but y'all live, love, and be free. I love y'all so much. Smooches.